way up north to hell and gone in 38 below the trail was all behind us we'd made it to the track we were waiting for the cpr and hope to get back bring the butt car oh, 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 oh bring the butt car hi dave hadfield here and i've been riding on the bud car the sudbury white river train for about 25 years and it is a wonderful unique service it's just a two-car passenger train that goes through the bush and it'll drop you off anywhere you like it doesn't have to be a station and if you're in the bush on a canoe or snowshoe trip you can flag it down and get picked up anywhere again doesn't have to be a station i really don't know a better way to access wilderness in canada so let me tell you how it works the train runs up the track from Sudbury, which is about a four-hour drive north of Toronto, to White River near the shore of Lake Superior on one day, lays over there, and comes back the next. That's mostly crown land, wild backcountry, almost not serviced by roads at all. So let's get one thing quite clear at the beginning. The Bud Carr has nothing to do with Budweiser. <laughs> Too bad. But no, it's spelled B-U-D-D, the Bud Corporation, and they made rail cars uh, from the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. These are RDCs, rail diesel cars, self-propelled. There's two engines, two Detroit diesels under the floor of each car. There used to be a fleet of them in Canada servicing remote and small communities, but now I think this one is the only one left. If you want to use it for camping, the first step is to check on a map and decide where you want to go. The train rolls mostly through crown land. It's not park. But once you've identified where the track crosses a lake or a river, a place you'd like to explore, you go online and buy a ticket to the next little whistle stop beyond that. Then you figure out the track mileage from either Sudbury or Chapleau. And at the train station in Sudbury, before departure, you pass that information along to the conductor and he talks to the engineer. You say something like, we want to get off at mile 66 where the train crosses Turtle Creek. And they figure it out in train terms and it works really well. They bring the train to a stop at that spot in the middle of uh, everywhere. <laughs> you hop down, they throw you all your stuff, it chugs away and you are perfectly situated to enter a wilderness world that you just can't do by road. It's a wonderful experience. It's like stepping back to 1964 or something. Of course, you also tell them where you expect to get picked up. And they generally remember where and when, and they'll at least slow down and look for you, although they won't stop unless you're there waiting. The cars themselves are clean, comfortable. The staff is friendly, cooperative. They all seem to like doing what they're doing. And the people on board are usually quite friendly too, although well, they tend to give you funny looks when you jump down into the snow. <laughs> I gotta say, it doesn't always work. The train is usually somewhat late because it doesn't have a high priority on that single track and often it has to take a siding so a freight train can go by. And sometimes even worse things happen. <laughs> In this photo, the bud car, as it went onto a siding, rode up onto some super hard packed snow and went off the rails. Where we were, standing and waiting, one hour, two hour, we didn't know what was going on until a freight train came to a halt. Well, almost. This was a little disconcerting. There's no Uber. But then, after another hour went by, another freight train approached, and this one did stop. He said, we're going to send a truck for you. And they did. It was great. It was like having a limo. <laughs> so here comes something. Looks like it's a pickup truck. This might be a ride to somewhere because the Bud car apparently is not running. So uh, we might be getting some sort of taxi way to somewhere. Stand by. However, you can't depend on that sort of thing. So with the bud car, you never want to arrive at the track totally out of food. 
and you need to have a plan B, which would be wait until the train comes back or walk to the closest community or even call a friend. It's not a bad idea to have an in-reach or some form of satellite communication so you can find out what's going on. Obviously, there's no cell phone service anywhere up there. But they do their absolute best to get there and pick you up. Now, this kind of backcountry camping is not for beginners. There are no thunder boxes or picnic tables. The whole point is to get away from the road network and into the backcountry. There's no park staff. You're on your own, and you have to proceed that way. But that's the pleasure and the glory and the satisfaction of it. To completely enter the world of living things for a period is such a privilege. If you're ready for that, I strongly encourage you to take the Bud Car. Ride the Sudbury White River train. The more people who do it, the longer this service will last. Bring the Bud Car. Oh, 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 oh. bring the Bud Car. Oh, take a Northern Railroad. Step back into time. Get on board. Get off where you please. From Bisco to White River or anywhere on the line. The train will stop, it'll drop you off in the rockin' lake and tree.